When you think of mysterious Hollow Knight characters, what comes to mind? Perhaps it's the Pale King and his cryptic death. Or Zamir and her flowers and unknowable origins. Or even Un and why her powers are weakening. But when I think of mysterious Hollow Knight characters, I think of Fluke Hermit. Introduced in the God Home DLC, Fluke Hermit stands out among the Hollow Knight character roster by being the only intelligent fluke and thereby parasite in the entire game. Even wearing clothes, which many intelligent bugs don't bother with. But how and why is she even sentient? Why is she so afraid of Fluke Marm? Why is Fluke Marm even so angry in the first place? Why are flukes so gross? Well, to answer these, it makes sense to try to find the flukes real life equivalent, and that is most likely the liver flukes. Liver flukes are classified under the invertebrate class Trematoda, evolving into their current form several million years ago. They can reproduce both sexually and asexually. In game, it is likely flukes do both as well, as Fluke Marm can self replicate flukes out of her body, along with there being thousands of eggs all over the waterways. Liver flukes start off as little larvae eggs made through sexual reproduction. In real life, these require, um, dung to hatch. This is a video about flukes, what did you expect? The larvae then hatch into Myricidia, which are tiny oval-shaped parasites with the sole purpose of reproduction. In Hollow Knight, it is likely the little baby that Fluke Hermit is poking at is analogous for this stage due to their similar shape whereas the tiny versions are larvae. These Myricidia want to find a host to attach to and feed off of to grow. In real life, this is often a young snail, but in Hollow Knight, it is likely that any living bug will do. Once they grow, the Myricidia then become sporocysts inside their first host, which are elongated sacs that asexually reproduce. This is likely not represented in game, since it happens inside the host itself. However, the sporocyst releases thousands of Cyricaria, which are free-floating larvae that are in search of a secondary host. It is likely that the fluke fae are a representation of this phase due to still being small and violent as real-life Cyricaria are. The Hunter's Journal also describes them as wanting to attach to anything, similar to how real-life Suricaria do. In real life, these Suricaria then attach to another mammalian host, where they then mature into fully adult flukes, but it is likely that in-game, they feed off any unsuspecting infected bug to fully form into normal flukes we see in-game, which then breed with fluke marm to produce more larvae, continuing the cycle. With this knowledge, we can then try to map out theories about the Fluke's history and their motives in-game. It is my belief that Flukes start off small, much smaller than they currently are in-game, perhaps even microscopic. I believe this due to the fact that they are parasites, while everything else is either a bug or fungi, which are much bigger than parasites. During Hollow Nest's Golden Age, the waterways were most certainly maintained and dead bodies laying around were few and far between. However, after the City of Tears fell, everything changed for the tiny flukes. One, flukes had a lot of excess species to produce on, as they were no longer being properly maintained due to the collapse of social order. Two, 
Infected bodies could not only help grow and reproduce, but also infect the flukes themselves. It was likely that the Radiance's influence grew these once microscopic parasitic entities to these drastic sizes. As flukes grew, they most certainly could not reproduce inside bugs as they once had. So it is likely that Fluke Marm, being the oldest, was forced to produce a breeding ground for Fluke Larvae. However, separate hosts were likely needed to grow the population and mature Fluke Fae into fully formed flukes. Fluke Marm, henceforth, likely fed off of feces and water to help grow her children. This explains how the hell a sewer system for thousands of bugs is so clean in most areas because flukes have completely cleared out all of the feces for growing their young. This then gives more credence to the Dung Defender. For many, the Dung Defender is somewhat of an odd character. He went from being one of the five great knights and the king's right hand man to someone living in literal shit. However, with this new context, this makes a lot more sense as to why he chose to live like this. His name has a lot of clues. He's the Dung Defender. What is he defending the Dung from? The Flukes, of course. And there's a lot of Dung to defend, as shown just by how deep the room is. If the Flukes ever got their hands on all of the feces in his area, they could hatch all of the unhatched larvae and completely overflow the waterways. If they managed to kill Ogrim, his body could be used to mature who knows how many fluke fey into flukes. This would most certainly cause the waterways to become even more infested than it already is. It is also likely that they will infest the City of Tears as well, in search of more bodies to feed on and feces to reproduce with. There is also Isma's Grove to consider. All the newly hatched flukes could feed off of Isma's body as well. So it is likely that Ogrim gave up his life as the White Defender, the Pale King's most loyal guard, to protect the crumbling city and his lover from the infestation of mindless flukes, painting his easily noticeable white armor brown to blend in with the dung as to not be noticed. This also goes to explain Fluke Marm's mindless rage. With her endless need to breed, she would most certainly be enraged that the biggest source of her breeding material is kept behind one stubborn beetle. The Flukes aren't completely mindless though, as with all this context, we can finally begin to understand Godmaster's best girl, Fluke Hermit, and why she is the way she is. A group of flukes travel through the western waterways. It's dark, quiet, and as of yet, an untamed, unexplored area. But unlike the rest of the waterways, the west had something more. Piles and piles of rotting, decaying garbage. The flukes began to feast on the rot growing to vastly larger sizes than seen in any other part of the waterways. Over time, these flukes would eventually grow too large to navigate the waterways. Fluke manga, as they were called, became trapped in these areas. So, as a way to continue expanding, they began to lay eggs of their own. Did you know that the fluke manga are likely analogous for the giant liver flukes, which are around 8 centimeters in length? What the fu- As all the other flukes were consuming garbage, one sole fluke makes it to the other side. Stumbling down the shaft, She awakens to find the mother of all garbage patches, the junk pit. 
The single fluke would go on to become the fluke hermit that we know. But as she began to consume large amounts of garbage here, she likely encountered a very rare and peculiar substance. The Pale Ores. But how and why is that important? Well, the nailsmith's shop is located directly above the junk pit. And we know from the fact that if you... Well... <sighs> the nailsmith, his body flows down to the junk pit. So that means things can flow from the nailsmith's shop down to the junk pit. So it is very reasonable to assume that any excess pale ore that the nailsmith didn't use in making a nail, he would merely dump it into the water that would lead to the junk pit. And from the name Pale Ore, we can henceforth assume that it likely has something to do with the Pale King. It is my belief that pale ores are chunks of the worm carcass that have fossilized and would get peeled off through time. This is likely due to the same color and texture the two share. This explains why the Great Nailsmith is located in Kingdom's Edge, as the cast off shell would have provided a lot of pale ore for them to use. We also know that it was the Pale King who gave bugs their sentience, so it may be possible that pale ore itself can do the same as well. Under that assumption, if Fluke Hermit then spent enough time in the junk pit growing and feeding, they could have gained some level of sentience from the nearby ores before heading back to Flukemarn. Sadly though, upon returning to Flukemarn, Fluke Hermit likely was able to understand that her mother was being solely driven by this destructive rage to breed at all costs. Her anger at not being able to kill Ogrim and spread further, terrifying the poor hermit. So, she retreated back to the junk pit, away from her mother, where she would only become more intelligent. Smart enough to sneak around flukes to rescue some of her sisters. Luckily though, the knight is able to change things. Upon the death of Flukemarm, Fluke Hermit is implied to be the new Flukemarm with such a position, she can guide the remaining flukes down a better path, turning them away from the Radiance's destructive influence and allowing them to coexist with a post-infection Hallow Nest. Assuming Bill doesn't fuck up everything.